All right, so ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to talk about um, in this case is graphing a quadratic in standard form. Now, when graphing a quadratic in standard form, there are a couple things that what I'm going to do is kind of first go over the main important things, and then we're going to obviously work into exa some examples. So the first important thing, guys, is if you remember, when we have a quadratic in standard form, we have x squared as x is our variables, and then a and b are our coefficients and c is our constant. So one of the first things that we always want to do when we are graphing a quadratic, I always like to do this because it sometimes um, can be confusing. The first thing I always like to do is label my a, label my b, and label what my c are. Now I'm not going to do example. This is just kind of a overview. But the first step I always like to do is draw in what exactly, it, exactly is a, b, and c. Okay. Now. Um, to do number step number two, we kind of need to understand what step number two represents. So what I'm going to graph in for you guys. Is what we call the parent graph. Now the parent graph is y equals x squared. You guys can see there's no a, b, c. There's no x, x. It's just x squared. The parent graph looks like this. And you're definitely going to want to write down the parent graph, especially for uh, next class period. Okay, so that's what the parent graph looks like. And if you guys remember quadratics, uh, there's going to open, they open up. Um, but the parent graph has a couple characteristics that we need to talk about. The first characteristic is this dotted line. And if you guys remember from geometry class, the dotted line represents symmetry. And you guys can see that that dotted line basically cuts that parabola in half. Would everybody agree? Yes. So we call that the axis of symmetry. And fortunately for you guys, step number two is identifying that line. Now notice it is a vertical line, so the equation is going to be x equals. So all you're simply going to do is x equals opposite of b divided by 2a. And that's simply how you find the axis of symmetry. All right. Um, now, the next point that you guys should notice is if you guys look at this parabola, as it rises to the left and rises up, when we kind of go down, you can see there's like this minimum value, right? You guys see this minimum value? Yes. And if we were to like flip the parabola, reflect it, then that point would be the maximum value. Well, that point that's either the minimum or the maximum is what we call our vertex. So that becomes into step number three. But the way I'm going to explain this, because I see a lot of students kind of get really confused with how to find the vertex, is one thing I want you guys to notice is, is the vertex is on the axis symmetry. Would you guys agree with me? So the x value of the vertex is the same as the x value that creates your line of symmetry. So to find the vertex, what we're simply going to do is we're going to create a table. So if you guys remember, when you guys create a table, if you have an xy table and you have all equation, it doesn't matter if the equation is quadratic, it doesn't matter if the equation is linear or whatever else. To write the equation, you take x. If you have a value for x, what do you do with that value of x to find y? Anybody with any equation? Yeah, I'm sorry, what did you say? So if I have a table and I say, hey, find the values of the table, right? and I give you an x, what do you do with the x to find the y? You plug it into the equation, right? So in this case, to find the vertex, we know the x value. The x value is the axis of symmetry, which is negative b divided by 2. So we figure out whatever that value is, and then we figure out what the y coordinate is going to be. So you have to plug that in. So we're going to plug in the x, and then we're going to figure out the y. Now, I don't know what, you know, we're just doing a hypothetical situation right now. I'm not doing any numbers, which I'll go over next. But once you guys plug it in, you're going to have an x, y point, which is your coordinate point, which is your vertex. Now, step number four is going to be find two points left or right 
of the axis of symmetry. So we're going to do some examples where some examples it's going to be easy to pick two points to the right. We're going to do some examples where it's going to be easy to pick two points to the left. All right, it's all going to be really, it's all going to depend on where the graph is. For the standard graph, it really doesn't matter. But what you're going to do is you're going to pick two points. So if here's my axis symmetry, you want to make this easy. We're not making this hard. Pick two points that are to the right. Well, let's do one and let's do two. So if I plug in one and I plug one in for x, one squared is going to give me one. So the y coordinate is one. So do you guys see how over one, up one, that point already, grew, already drew the graph, already drew the point in there. Then we go to the second point. Let's do two. You could do 10, you could do eight, you could do seven, you could do negative one, you could do negative five, you could pick any points you want to. But don't pick, just pick points that are really close to the axis symmetry. So if I pick two, I plug two in for x, two squared is four. So four up in this case is, um, or over two up four. So those are my two points. So you plot your two points. Then to graph the remaining graph, what you're simply going to do is the nice thing about the of the axis symmetry is you guys can see that the axis symmetry, again, as I mentioned, cuts it in half, right? So it reflects the whole graph over. So all you simply need to do is take your two points to one side and reflect them over. So your last step, step number five, is to reflect the points over the axis. And then once you reflect the points, you guys can just continue up. And that is it. So without showing.